with the acknowledgement that we are gathered on sacred homelands of the Mohicanuk and Mohican people who are stewards of this land. Today the community resides in Wisconsin and is known as the Stockbridge Muncie Mohican Nation. And we pay respect to their ancestors, both past and present. The Voices Lecture Series presents speakers on timely and enduring issues each semester, which broaden and enrich the scope of studies here at Hudson Valley. In order to help the, uh, the committee select future programming, they ask that you please fill out the surveys you receive and return them to committee members in the back of the auditorium on your way out today. My name is Ryan Mashroom. I'm a lieutenant with the City of Schenectady Police Department. Uh, and I oversee our public relations department there. I'm also a former student at Schenectady County Community College, uh, a graduate of SUNY Oneonta, and a current certificate of graduate study at University of Albany School of Public Health. So I know what it's like to be a student again after 20, 20 years away, and it's not easy. I'm also a proud former participant in the Voices Lecture Series here at Hudson Valley Community College. Today, though, I'm here to introduce a truly dynamic individual who um, I not only have the pleasure to often work with in my job, but someone I'm also happy to call a friend. Angelica Morris, Ange, or Angie, as we know her, is one of the most active people and involved people you'll ever meet in the Capital District. To read her resume would take up all of her time, so I'll just briefly hit on a few highlights here. Uh, Ange is currently the Executive Director of the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission and the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Coalition, where she works daily to ensure fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community. When something is wrong, Ange is there to fight for those who may be apprehensive to fight on her own. She's a true champion of human rights. She is the youngest person and the first African-American female in Schenectady County history to oversee a county agency. She's a 2001 graduate of the University of Albany, go great days, and uh, where she earned her bachelor's degree in political science and public policy. She also has an associate's degree in political science from right here at Hudson Valley Community College. During the college years, she was the vice president of UAlbany Student Government, a student senator, the educational affairs student director, a member of the University President's Council, and a representative of the University Board of Trustees. She was also New York State Assembly. Uh, uh, she was also a New York State Assembly legislative intern for Edward Sullivan, and was promoted to legislative assistant upon her graduation. Ange currently serves on the board of directors for Northern Rivers, the YMCA of Schenectady County, and on the advisory board for Siena College's Dr. Martin Luther King Lecture Series. She's also on the advisory board for the Black Women of Albany Association, as well as the Capital Region African American Cultural Center. For time's sake, I will have to, there's a lot more. I can show them to you, but it's, it's, it's just trust me, there's quite a bit more things here. Uh, we also have to carve out a little bit. Uh, if I had to go through all the awards she's won over the years, it probably would take up the whole time. So anything from the ADLs, no place for hate award to the human rights award, she certainly has no shortage of accolades in her interviews. We also, uh, in 2017, Ange led the way in renaming a portion of Albany Street in the doc uh, it's connected to Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Way, marking a milestone in the 30 years of the coalition's existence. The naming honors the life and legacy of one of the world's pillars in civil rights history, who fought daily for equality and social change, much like Anders. I am now proud to formally introduce my friend, and the true Capital Region icon, Ange Moore. Good afternoon. Am I, am, am I here at Hudson Valley? The students? Are these young students? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There you go. There you go. Um, so I'm just going to put out in the open, please don't be afraid of me by my title. Um, I'm a very down to earth, fun, loving person. The title tends to scare people. So today is going to be an informal, session. I'm going to be talking about a lot of things um, that you students may are dealing with, you've been through, or you may be going through. And I'm going to share some tips, tools, and strategies how you become an effective community resident, an effective 
student on campus, as well as becoming an effective and impactful uh, community leader. And so I just want to first want to say thank you to Professor Daring and to Hudson Valley for allowing me to be on campus, but also to you showing up. So give yourselves a round of applause. And I said showing up is some students tend not to go to class when you know, they hear somebody from coming off campus and they think it's a boring presentation or they're forced to be here. Um, but you're here because you want to be here. You're here is because it was a decision for you to be here to hear some important information, to learn about me. If you never heard of me, I'm quite sure many of you have not heard of me. And if you have, thank you for being here. Um, I will share a little bit about my background. Um, I'll share a little bit about my role as executive director. I will talk about the MLK coalition that I am part of, what we've done uh, in Schenectady in the capital region. I will talk about MLK's legacy and dream. What does that look like in 2020? And then I'm gonna open up to the floor to hear your questions, concerns, um, make it informal, and then afterwards, if you want to, for you all, it's all about social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, do selfies, or whatever. I don't know if you like to do selfies or not. I don't know. Some people like to do selfies. Um, but if you want to do that, that's fine, too. I take pictures a lot. I do selfies with people. Um, even at the gym, people see me while I'm working out, and they want to do a selfie. I don't know. I just want to work out. <laughs> but, you know, they want to take pictures. Um, but again, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very humbled to be here because when I got the call and the emails um, about being, being the first to kick off the, voice, the, uh, the voices uh, of this presentation on mass, and my uh, presentation is Unheard No More, Power Through Action, I said, okay. That's a, I gotta raise the bar and the standard. But I'm just gonna be myself, and that's who I am. I'm gonna be transparent as I can. I'm gonna give you facts, research, data, but I want you to, to listen to the information or to what I'm saying and make sure that you apply that to what you hear, um, apply that to your life in any area of your life, even on campus and go out to do the work that you have been called and commissioned to do. Um, so as Lieutenant Mascheron mentioned, Sergeant Mascheron, um, he's a friend, so. Well, I work with law enforcement in Schenectady, um, and I've known uh, Ryan for a long time. Uh, when I was a young staffer in the mayor's office uh, with former Mayor Brian Stratton, so just to tell you a little bit about myself, and I'm going to give you a little quote. The quote goes like this. Every day that you wake up, you're about to go to school. The world is a university, and everybody around you is a student. What does that mean? Everyone that you come in contact with, you're learning something from them or you're learning something that you don't want to take from that person. So for me, I had, my life was not a rosy, clear cut, silver spoon journey. My journey came with highs and lows, mountaintop experiences and valleys, the valley of the shadow of death, but I feared no evil because I am still here. I grew up in a single family home with a mother with two brothers and a sister. My mother was very active in the community, within the community, political, community, socially, and church. At the age of 12, I had my, my first job um, that was babysitting. I made more money babysitting um, than some people made in a paycheck. That taught me about responsibility, number one. Number two, I was taught that I would never be nothing. I was taught that I was going to be a C student. The 
the, when my teachers told my mother that I always be a C student because I had a learning disability. Every time I took a test, I would just bomb it because I forget the information. I never knew my biology and father before. I never knew. Them. I grew up with no father, but I grew up with male role models around me, uncles, uh, men in the church, men in the community, coaches. I was a young athlete at the age of six playing basketball. Still do. I work out every day currently. I'm a super athlete. I'm a rider, swimmer, uh, cyclist. I do CrossFit, and I also do boxing now. However, that goes back to my childhood because I was told I would never be nothing. So I took that anger and I channeled that anger into academics and sports. Because when you don't know who your a parent is, either a father or a mother, that deals with your self-esteem. And a lot of people right now are dealing with adult issues because they never dealt with child issues. Young issues, child issues, tends to be adult issues. When you don't deal with unresolved anger, when you don't deal with unresolved self-esteem issues, that weighs on you. You tend to be an overachiever. You tend to overcompensate for one area because you feel that you don't validate in another area. So you have to compete, either sports and academics, if a student next to you gets an A, a hundred, you have to make sure you get a hundred and one. If you're a B student, you have to make sure that you're top of your game, an overachiever. That's why, you know, narcissists, they have to put people down because they don't like themselves. And any time you have someone hating on you is because you have something that they want. And so all the stuff that I was going through in my childhood it made me who I am today. Because what you go through in your past, it doesn't matter what your start is in life. Everything happens, and it matters what your finish in life is all about. So I go through high school, middle school. They told me I'd never be nothing. So I took that, channeled it into academics and sports. I come here to Hudson Valley, and I surround myself with professors and students that I want to be like or I want to be calm. So the first place I went to on Hudson Valley was EOP. And who was that EOP director? Lou Copeland. Lou Copeland played one of the most, imp most impactful and vital role in my life in 1998. When I came on campus, I knew nobody. I knew nobody. Lou embraced me. Not as a student, not as another number, but he embraced me as a f black female who didn't know her father, but he showed me love. And when you show people love and appreciation, it breaks down walls. And love is the most powerful thing that can change someone's heart as well as a student. When you're coming from nowhere, when you don't know what's going on, you don't know on campus, and someone embraces you, that makes you feel valuable and appreciated. Lou embraced me, I embraced him, he became my mentor, I became an all-star student here on campus, got involved with student government, student trustee, got involved with EOP, and I graduated, top of my class, and was a recipient of a scholarship I had no clue about, and Lou told me about it. Didn't know I could win it, but I won it because I was the only student that applied. So if you're looking for extra money, go to Lou Copeland. He knows where the money's at. <laughs> um, then from there, I went to UAlbany, graduated, got involved with UAlbany campus. Again, top of my class. Decided that I wanted to go into politics, maybe. I wanted to go into law school, um, become a lawyer, because at the young age, I, my motto was, if you do the crime, you do the time. I wanted to become a prosecutor. Then I wanted to become a judge. But I didn't know the journey that I had to take. So when I did the internship down at the New York State Assembly, that changed the whole perspective of my life as well as the trajectory of my life. The assembly member that I got assigned to said to me, Ange, you don't have to go to law school to get into politics. Save yourself $150,000. Sure. 
So I was faithful over that little thing, not knowing that I, in the future, I will become a ruler over many. I don't want to throw religion in there, but that's just a scripture in the Bible. That if you're, if you're faithful over few, you can become ruler over many. If you're faithful over few, you can be a ruler over many. So I going through my life, I met a man doing the New York State Assembly, right in the elevator. Didn't know who he was. And it's always nice to be nice. It's always nice to make someone feel special. Say hi when someone speaks to you. Show a smile if someone is not smiling, because you don't know a smile and a hi can change someone's life. You don't know what people are going through. So I was riding the elevator with him every day. Said hi to him every day. Little did I know that he would be my future boss a year and a half late. I went, talked to him. He asked me regarding <coughs> if I wanted to work for him. I had to go through the process. Little did I know that he would be running and win the seat of Mayor of Schenectady, that is Brian Stratton, who is the current director of the Erie Canal Corp of New York State. I worked with him for about three and a half, four years. Life happens again, I get, some, I get involved with my passion, which is political science, public policy, campaigns. I worked on the campaign in 2006 with Governor Spitzer, and then things happened there, client number nine happened. You guys remember client number nine? Are you guys young enough to remember that scandal? Okay. Um, and then from there, I go work over at the New York State Lottery, with Yolanda Vega. Everybody knows who Yolanda Vega is? No? Okay. So Yolanda Vega is the one that gives out the big checks with lottery. And she says, the New York lottery number is? OK, well, got you. <laughs> I feel old. And I'm not old. <laughs> anyway, I work with Yolanda Vega going up and down the highways four to five days a week, giving out checks and money, and making people feel happy because they want a million dollars. Little do they know that you win a million dollars in New York State on the lottery ticket, you're not getting a million dollars because of the taxes. So you get, you get a lump, if you get a lump sum, they're going to take more taxes. So if you get a big check for a million dollars on those scratch off, on the scratch off, you get it quarterly. You don't get it all in one lump sum. And if you do get it all in lump sum, you're not getting a million dollars. But long story short, I would see people spend their last five dollars that they had getting evicted, not paying bills. They spend five dollars and they win three million dollars. Or I see, you know, I, there was a guy, he won $150,000 a week. He, and then how he did that was he got evicted. He was in Queens, he got evicted from an apartment. He moved back to his mom's apartment and he had $20, his last $20, and he says, well, okay, my life is up anyway, so might as well spend $20 on a lottery ticket. And he won $3 million for life. That was like $150,000 a week, something like that, some crazy number. Anyway, long story short, I would deal with all that, you know, winnings and happiness and everything. Um, but then all of a sudden, my life takes a turn again. From there, I went from working for the city then working from the state, and then all of a sudden, the, uh, my predecessor, Brian Wright, who's in my position for 17 years, decides to retire. After 17 years with the county and then 35 years with the state, life happens. And then in 2012-13, that's when I get appointed <coughs> to this position, becoming the first uh, African-American female, the youngest and the only to be um, in a commissioner level position in Schenectady County history. So it just kind of gave you a little background, sped through my professional life, and I, you could talk to me afterwards about politics and government, how I have connections with state, local, federal government officials based on my relationships that I built within the state assembly as a, new, as a young intern 
And currently now, those relationships that I built when I was in the State Assembly are now personal, flourishing, fruitful, fulfilling relationships with a lot of legislators um, down in the State Assembly and also federally. A lot of the Congress, uh, members of Congress that served in the Assembly and they currently are members of Congress now, some of them are personal friends because I served with them and worked with them in the New York State Assembly. Uh, a little bit about my role. My role, uh, this was like two years ago, a high school senior says, you sound like Olivia Pope. Scandal. You guys know scandal? I said, what do you mean? They said, well, you sound like you're the fixer. You're the first one to be called or the last one to be called. And I said, okay, if you want to say it that way. Um, but I said, no, I'm here to help people regarding their human rights, civil rights. Um, I inform people on the New York State laws with the New York State human rights, the four areas that prohibits discrimination within the New York State law. I talk to people about not only their human rights, but I talk to them about local issues that impacts their communities, either in the local communities or on campus. I deal with law enforcement. Uh, I work with all elected officials, business leaders, students, uh, non-for-profits, for-profits. I deal with a lot of people. So to put my uh, title responsibilities just in a lump sum is basically I partner and collaborate and support all local agencies and groups of people um, to make sure that their human rights are being protected and respected, making sure that they fulfill their, their mission or their cause and as I do that, I'm fulfilling my mission and my cause to make sure your rights are being protected. And the other thing is I host a community forums relating to issues that impacts local communities. Uh, I work with our MLK Coalition, which I will get to later on, but also the Human Rights Commission that has been, uh, it's a voluntary board of, board of advisors. Um, we host annual events, the MLK Coalition, uh, the MLK program that we've been holding in Schenectady County, and then our words breakfast that we have recognizing community organizations, leaders, groups, and youth who's doing the outstanding work in the Schenectady County community in the areas of human rights, civil rights, and social justice. On top of that, I sit on a lot of boards as a board of advisor, as a special advisor, making sure organizations within our county and our region are doing the work on behalf of the community in the areas of civil rights, human rights, social justice. Um, I am very passionate about what I do. A lot of that I do, I have to be on top of research, facts, information, statistics, uh, relating to different areas uh, within human rights. And human rights is huge, like women's rights, uh, with the uh, veterans' rights, talking about race, sexual orientation. So within New York State human rights laws, uh, everyone in the protected classes are basically like veterans, your age, your race, your nationality, uh, your religion, uh, your sexual orientation. Now there's gender identity. Um, Every, basically everyone in the room right now, you are in one of those protected classes in New York State Human Rights. The four areas that is prohibited regarding discrimination is disability, is within public accommodations, housing, and credit. So right now I'm just going to pause and to see if everybody's okay. Good. So I'm going to talk about, it's 1.30, and I think I have 20 more minutes. I'm going to talk about Dr. King and go into about the MLK Coalition. Because I'm assuming everyone here is waiting to hear about MLK during the description and action and taking action, power through action. So 
I told you a little bit about myself, told you a little bit about my role, and now we're gonna shift into the meat of the conversation of why I am here to talk about Dr. King. So the Martin Luther King Coalition 30, has been in existence of 30 years, for 30 years, and it's our coalition that advances the teachings and principles of Dr. King. Within those teachings and dis, uh, doctrines and teachings of Dr. King, he talks about areas of human rights, civil rights, of violations, or standing up for people of fairness, justice, equality. Now, we just celebrated Dr. King's uh, birthday, January 15. January 15, 1929, he would have been 91 if he was still here. And I said to some people at a, and I'll get into later, a women's rally, what would Dr. King say, but what would he do if he was still here? And someone yelled out to me, he would be marching. 91 years old, I highly doubt if he would be marching in 10 degrees weather in New York, in Northeast Schenectady or Albany weather, no. What would Dr. King, I'm gonna throw out this question and just ponder on it. What would Dr. King say, or what would he do if he was still here? If he was here in a class with you, what would he say to you today? What would he say to you or to us looking at the state of affairs of our nation? Looking at the state of affairs of our state or our local community? the capital region, what would he say? What would you want to say to him if he was here? If you had an opportunity to interview him, what would you ask him about what would he be doing? And I would just say, he would probably say to you, what are you going to do about what's going on in your local community, in your state, in the nation? Are you taking proper action? Are you taking proper responsibility in your civil rights, civic duty to hold elected officials accountable? What are you doing to stand up on Hudson Valley Community College campus to ensure all students' rights are being protected? That all students has access to scholarships, to books, to not being overlooked because of the color of your skin or because some people may think you have a learning disability or because you're from a different country. You're from Jamaica or Trinidad or China. Some, something to think about. So the MLK Coalition, what we do is we talk about those issues that people don't want to talk about. We're going to talk about, we talk about those issues of racial, justice or injustice. I know what it's like regarding being mistreated based on the color of your skin or being a female, a black female. Some people perceive black females when you're talking with your hand and you're being passionate and you're talking facts. Some people perceive that as being angry, but it's not. It's being very educated, articulating, but making sure people know the issues and the facts. Dr. King mentioned regarding white America. And it was in a NBC interview right before he died. And he talked about white America, just paraphrasing, never experienced. White America is the only race that never experienced slavery. And then to tell the black, the Negro, to pull up their bootstraps when we don't have bootstraps. What was he talking about that? Was he talking about racism? Does racism exist today? Does racism exist today? That was 50 years ago he spoke out against racism. Is racism live and well today? White supremacy, he talked about white supremacy. He talked about the prejudices. 
everything that Dr. King talked about 50 years ago, we are living right now. So with the MLK Coalition, we talk about those issues and we address them in areas of community forums, scholarships to high school students that doesn't have any financial uh, assistance or they need financial assistance because Dr. King talked about economic justice. Jobs for those poor, middle, for the poor, for the middle class, for labor. Did you know that Dr. King, he fought for women's rights. Dr. King was the only male, the only black male, and the only clergy to sit on the board of Planned Parenthood. He was the only one that spoke out for women's rights and reproductive justice. Dr. King played a very vital role within the civil rights movement. And any time you see a movement of change within any country, city, community, it starts with young people. So if you want to bring change to Hudson Valley, you all have to make a decision of taking action. And that is unheard no more power through action. In order for you to make change at Hudson Valley, if you don't like what's going on in here at Hudson Valley, you get a group of students together, you first strategize, then what you do is you mobilize. You galvanize, and then you implement with the action. I was a student here on campus. I was part of the student senate on campus. And there was a lot of things that we didn't like on campus at that time. But we got together and we put some programs together back in 1997, 98 that you currently have in place today. I'm on the foundation board that gives out millions of dollars to students that need financial need. Why am I on the foundation board is because Dr. King talked about economic justice, making sure students, families, get the proper financial care, but yet making sure there's jobs, making sure there's fairness and opportunities for those who don't have opportunities. He also talked about education, the function of education. Therefore, it's to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. You all are here not because you don't want to be here, it's because you want to be here to become productive and to get a good job or whatever the case may be. But some college is not for everybody. Education should be for everybody. You're here at a public university or institution. And it's up to you to decide which direction in your life you want to go. If you want to become a community activist and talk about civil rights, you want to be a women feminist and go out there and scream and yell and talk and talk and do women marches and all that good stuff. But the bottom line is education. You're here because someone paved the way for you to be here. You're here on legacies of former civil rights leaders, women rights leaders. Your parents, some, some of you are first time college students coming here. That's a dream come true for some of you. Some of you come from poor families. Some of you come from rich families. Some of you maybe are here because you don't know why you're here. You have no clue where your life's going to go. But maybe today will be a day that you'll take some action and responsibility and say, listen, I'm going to buckle down and I'm going to make sure that I become the best that I can. So with the MLK Coalition, we deal with students. We talk to students. We educate students through our financial scholarship programs. And then what we do is we work in the community on behalf of Dr. King's legacy. 2017 was the year when 
we accomplished one of our goals and our dream to have Dr. King's legacy in the city of Schenectady, which took some challenges because we wanted to rename a street named after Dr. King, but there was a challenge of why did you want to do that? There was some legislation that was put in place for us not to have that. But we overcame the challenge, and now till this day, for the last three years, we have a street, which they told us we only have two blocks. Two blocks is not even bigger than this room. But we have a street that encompasses a whole entire neighborhood that has Dr. King's legacy, it's the MLK Junior Way, that on that street, and sorry to rash your uncle probably confirm this, the last three years on that street, that there's no more gun violence, no more prostitution, there's economic development has happening, housing, senior housing has, has happening, because the community has taken pride because of Dr. King's legacy. The other thing that we've done and what I've currently did is in the last couple weeks, Schenectady had its first Women's Rights March. And it was an idea that I had, and I pitched it to Planned Parenthood in a meeting that I was at. And Planned Parenthood agreed with the idea, and we ran with it. And within six weeks, we had our first march that drew over 600 women, 600 people, to make sure women voices were heard, and to make sure the national, we stood in the national solidarity for women's rights. That is all about the power of action. If you want to see change in your local communities on campus, you got to be about the change. What would Dr. King say about 2020 in America? Are we better off now than we were 50 years ago, or are we worse? Yes and no. We see the news every day. Some group is being attacked. Some, somebody's color is being called out. We're seeing the height of hate crimes going on against Jews. And it's just on and on and on and on. But it's up to us in this, next, in this year to make sure that we stop the madness and we take the action that we're supposed to take. You all are here because you have a responsibility and an assignment to fulfill your call and duty of your life. You all are the, C you all are the CEO of your life. You are the ones that brings the board of directors into your company. And if you want a good, prosperous, successful company, make sure that you vet your board of directors that's coming into your life. Will those board of directors challenge you to become better? Will they encourage you to build greatness out of you? Because every one of you has an opportunity to become a CEO. And I'm not talking about a business. And yes, you can be a CEO of a business. But you are the CEO of your life. Will you bring constituents into your life? People that will love on you and support your dream? Or will you bring comrades? Those are people that will just be with you, but they don't have your heart. But do you have a group of confidants that will support you and share your secrets that you don't have anyone to share with? And they will give you good, wise counsel. And to say, keep doing what you're doing. I see greatness in you. But if you can settle for good, be all right with good. But why don't you strive to be great? Because great is better than good. Because good is not only going to get you no more, great can bring you out of doors and bring you into doors that no man can open for you. But it's all about you taking action and doing your duty that you were called here to do. And to keep Dr. King's legacy alive by <coughs> action. He brought people together because it was about building unity in the spirit of love for that beloved community. So will you do the same here on Hudson Valley campus? Will you bring the change that's on Hudson Valley that you may not like, but will you bring the change that you will want to see? 
Because if you can do that, then that is success. So I'm going to open up for questions right now before time uh, closes. If anyone has any questions, please, I don't know if there's a mic, but just state, stand up and state your name and just ask the question. Okay. Continue to stay on track without letting all of the problems bring you down if you catch what I'm putting down. Like, it's really hard, especially nowadays, being our age, to fall into, um, I don't know, things that we shouldn't be doing, per se. How are you able to stay on track? So, what helped me to keep on track is I'm a type of person, I'm a planner. And I get in a routine and I do the routine. But also, I surround my people, myself, with wisdom, with older people or people who I know that has my back to support. Sometimes, in order for you to be mature, you have to be around maturity. And maturity is not an age, it's not about age. Because there's people who are 60 years old and they act like 16 year olds. Whereas you have a 16-year-old that's acting like they're 50. Then you have 30-year-olds that is acting like they're 20. So age is not all about maturity. How I did it was I set goals. And at times, I would beat up on myself because I had to set that goal or I'd get distracted. And I had people around me, accountability people. And let the attitude go. Because your attitude ain't getting you nowhere. You're miserable, okay, if you're miserable, take it over here. And I would have to talk to myself, say, why am I doing this? And sometimes, you know what? If you lack sleep, because sleep is all wears on you as well, too. If you're lacking sleep and you're not taking care of yourself, definitely exercise, you get plenty of water, then you tend to take things out on other people, right? So how I do is I keep balance. And my balance is the model of my life. Is I read to build my mind, I pray to build my spirit, and I work out to build my body. Those are the three things that keeps me grounded, keeps me balanced, and also with the people I surround myself with aren't enablers. They're not, some of them aren't even my age. And so sometimes you have to look at who you are as a person separate from what you do. And then from there, you'll, you'll choose what to do and what not to do regarding discipline. Because discipline always keeps you in a rooting balance and also a humble spirit. And then when you're in pride and you can't hear nobody and you're really stubborn, then those are some areas that maybe you need to work on when it comes to setting goals and being productive. But for me, again, that's reading, praying, working out, and surrounding myself with people that aren't enablers but will give me hard truth, what in love. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Did you yeah, have a question? Mine too. No, okay. mine too. Yes, go ahead. Uh, my name is Wells. I hope you don't mind me asking, but uh, earlier you were talking about what would Dr. King think about 2020 America. Would he think that it was better or worse than his time? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you don't mind, but I was just wondering what you thought. Do you think it's better or worse than his time? Um, thank you for that question, and I get asked that a lot. I think we're worse off now, and this is just in my opinion, I think we're worse off now than we were in the civil rights. And the reason why I say that is right now, there's no, we have leadership but we don't have anyone to take on those mantles like they did in, their, in the civil rights movement. So you had Dr. King, you had civil rights, you had Dr. King, Rosa Parks, Marcus Garvey's, you had the Malcolm Maxes, but within the civil rights movement, you had other groups that came together and formed organizations. Like the civil rights movement was very, very supported by the Jewish community. The first president of the NAACP was a Jewish man. The NAACP was built off of blacks and Jews. Within the civil rights movement, those movements birthed the women's rights movements. 
and other movements. So within 2020, are we birthing out movements that were in, are impactful and, effect, and effective to bring national legislation to pass? Like in the 1960s, that's where the voting rights came through, right? That's where the women's rights issues came through. All of the programs that you all are in now, those were birthed, the social justice issues were birthed out in the 1960s. And then from the 70s, you know, you had the Woodstock era, and then the 80s, you had, so for me, I think right now, I think it's worse. Not only that, but you had presidents that was the politics. Yes, you had traditional Democrats and Republicans. You had they called the Dixie Democrats, but now it's very partisan. Is partisanism has taken is just on a whole nother level. And then you have someone up in there, and the president who doesn't even know anything about government. It's everything is about corruption and cronyism and all the isms. You have no one in there that knows what they're talking about government. So at least we had some Republicans in there who were former senators and had people surround. Now we just have a business con man, agent number 45, who's orange. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never seen a, somebody who was orange. I mean, we, we had some black president. We had a white president, but other than that. Yeah, anyway, I know we're being filmed, it won't be edited, but right now, do your due diligence and vote. Be counted. Join the census. Be counted. Students must be counted for the census.